Hello, my name is Kuba Dombrowski from Evermotion and today I will teach you how to match uh, the 3D object into a photo. So we will be going from this to this in a few simple steps. Uh, this is our photo and I've already cleaned this area from unwanted objects. And now I will just continue and erase all these unnecessary reflections from this mirror. This is a really easy task. Let's use a um, patch tool. I will select these objects and move the selected area to the clear area to erase them. Patch tool can create some problems when correcting areas near the borders. As we can see, it creates a little uh, bit of a light leak. So let's use healing brush tool. Select clear area with alt click and just paint this. Okay, now we can use just Ctrl T and expand this mirror border. Okay, this is good enough. So now let's save our image and the next step will be in 3D Studio Max. Okay, first of all we have to load our image the viewport background. Let's press Alt B and load our stock photo. Make sure to check display background option. Now by pressing Shift F let's enable our save frame. To create correct proportions we have to go to our output size and type the photo resolution. As you can see the quality of our background is a bit low. You can change this by going to customize and preferences and in viewport rollout uh, you have to change your driver to direct 3D. But this quality will be enough uh, for us to match our perspective. First of all, let's create a box. Height will be 250 centimeters. Make it a little bit longer. Now we can convert it to poly and flip our faces. Now I will create a V-Ray camera inside the box. Let's disable vignetting and change custom balance to white color. Ok, now let's go to our camera. Select our box, go to Object Properties and reduce the visibility to 0.1. Now we can see through our box and it will be much easier to match the perspective to the photo. First thing we need to do is to set the correct focal length of our V-Ray camera. Sometimes this data is stored inside the photo, but unfortunately this time 
and we have to handle it by ourselves. So um, right now our focal length is set to 40 millimeters, but um, at first glance we can see that this corridor is shot definitely uh, in some lower range. My guess would be something uh, like 21 millimeters or even 18 millimeters. These are the most common values for the wide angle photos. So let's press, uh, let's type 18. And now we can play a little bit with the orbit option. So already uh, we can see that these lines will match the walls and the ceiling. If you want a more precise orbit, uh, just press Alt key and it will go much slower than usual. OK. Now we can um, expand this wall to the left. Now let's add some connects to check if our perspective is set correctly. Let's match this uh, connects to lines on the floor. Okay, so uh, these lines of perspective are set correctly. And now let's check these uh, lines. So as you can see, we have a slight problem here. <coughs> because the third perspective doesn't match. So this can be corrected by using horizontal shift in our camera. So let's adjust this a little. Okay. And once again use orbit. We also have to use the vertical shift option to make these lines totally vertical. Just press guess vertical shift. Let's adjust horizontal shift a little bit more. Now let's move these lines once again. Okay, so right now our perspective is matched almost perfectly. Let's also check some additional horizontal lines. Okay, so mirrors are matching. This line also matches. This is also okay. And this line is also okay. So at this point, we can continue uh, modeling this interior. Let's just extrude this face a little backwards. We can also create this part of walls. Just use Auto Grid. Okay. 
Now I will also add another connect here and create some space in this room. Let's continue with the modeling. Now I will create uh, a window opening. Now let's put our mm, V-Ray light in here. And let's increase its power to 600. I will also create some additional V-Ray light behind the camera. It will simulate some light coming from the door. We may also and the select affectives so it only affect our reflections and decrease its value to 60. The simple modeling process is ready and now let's adjust let's adjust some materials so they resemble our photo. Let's use angle by angle option. Select our floor. This one is uh, some kind of gray. The wall here has a little yellow tint. as well as those pillars. The ceiling is a bit darker than the rest. Let's move this wall a little bit closer and now we have to adjust material um, that resembles these colors, black and red. I will use gradient ramp to simulate it. Now let's just use some tiling 
and assign this material to the wall. This will help us to achieve correct reflections in our lamp. Okay. I think uh, we are done with the materials and now it's time to merge our lamp to the scene. And place it um, somewhere here in the middle. And now we can set up the rendering. I'm using a linear workflow, so let's enable gamma correction and type uh, 2.2 in input gamma. As for the V-Ray setup, let's leave the default setup for the GI, just increase the brute force subdivisions, increase uh, minimum and maximum subdivisions, let's make area filter a little more blurry, enable your frame buffer and decrease uh, noise threshold. We have to enable some render elements that will be helpful. I will be using only V-Ray reflections and uh, also V-Ray shadows. Let's also increase subdivisions in the V-Ray light to 64. Let's not forget about uh, color mapping setup. Check clamp output and sub pixel mapping. Change your gamma to 2.2 and I'm usually using Reinhardt color mapping with burn values below 1. We will also need an alpha mask to cut out our lamp from the render. So let's go to V-Ray properties and change alpha contribution to minus one in all of our walls. Okay, now we'll just uh, need to render this small region Okay, so our render is ready. Now I will save our passes and go to the Photoshop. Okay, so here are our passes and the photo. First of all, we have to create a mask for the RGB color and copy our alpha. Just press Alt-click, click on mask and paste our alpha. Okay, our lamp appears uh, a little bit too dark. We can correct it by using our reflection pass and blend it in the screen mode. We can also add mask here and apply some black color to the base to reduce light coming here. Okay, now it's time for the shadow pass. Uh, the shadow pass needs to be corrected a little to create a little more contrast. Because right now it's not really usable. Okay. Now use black color to reduce the parts that are not important. I will also desaturate. Now we can collapse uh, levels with the pass by pressing Ctrl E and invert our layer 
by pressing Ctrl I. This layer can be now blended in the multiply mode. We can copy it once more to enhance this effect. Right here we have a slight problem with the white pixels border. This can be repaired by choosing our alpha mask, selecting this region and correcting levels in this part. Okay. Okay, so our image is almost ready. I will add some few more effects to make it look a little better. First, we can select this uh, bright area right here. Just set the correct tolerance. Use Ctrl J to copy this selection to a new layer. And now we'll add some small bloom to this lamp. Now just use Gaussian Blur. Okay. Another thing that we may add is uh, some light cone going from the lamp to the floor. So let's create a new layer by pressing Ctrl Shift N and create a selection in the shape of some kind of cone. Now we'll have to use a gradient with the yellow color going to the alpha. Okay, let's change the blending mode to screen and add some Gaussian blur. The last thing I usually do is uh, to decrease the quality of our merged objects because usually photo uh, has uh, all kinds of noise and chromatic aberrations. So first we can apply some chromatic aberration by using filters and lens correction. Let's zoom it a little and go to custom and let's add some red cyan fringe okay this will be enough and uh, right now we can also add some noise let's copy our layer go to filter noise add noise Okay, this will be good. Now just saturate it a little. Use some very small Gaussian blur. And now let's check some blending modes. Let's use lighten but really reduce the opacity something like 3 okay right now the surface of our lamp uh, matches the quality of the photo so it will appear a little bit more realistic okay so this will be all and i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned some new little tricks See you later.